Thank you, Lance. I'm pleased to report to you some of the specific findings of this study. Let me re reiterate the main finding of the report, which is that dramatically different climates emerged and climate impacts emerged depending on whether we choose a low emissions future or a high emissions future. If we choose a high emissions pathway, Pennsylvania becomes dramatically hotter than it is today by 6 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. But under the lower emissions pathway, the warming is only half as much, 3 to 6 degrees. If we choose high emissions, summers in Pennsylvania will feel like those of Alabama and Georgia by the end of the century, whereas they would be more typical of Kentucky and Virginia under a lower emissions pathway. Summer heat waves are a serious threat in Pennsylvania City, Pennsylvania cities, and these are also sensitive to the emissions pathway. As an example, let's consider extremely hot days, those above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Summers now in Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh are nearly absent of these extremely hot days currently. If we choose high emissions, all three uh, cities would experience nearly a month's worth of these extremely hot days each summer by the end of the century. But if we choose the lower emissions pathway, these cities would experience only about a week's worth of extreme heat each summer. And the impact of this extreme heat could be catastrophic. A little known fact is that in most years, heat is the leading weather-related killer in the United States. Pennsylvania cities are particularly vulnerable because of high population density and the urban heat island effect. Warming is going to also degrade air quality. A finding from our study is that by late century in Philadelphia, ozone concentrations will increase 15 to 25 percent under the higher emissions pathway. However, the increase is only 5 to 10 percent under a low emissions pathway. The high temperatures will also lead to uh, drier soils, and our projections show increases in drought frequency. And as, as an example of one of the findings concerning drought, consider droughts lasting one to three months in, east, in the eastern half of Pennsylvania. These uh, droughts currently occur about once every two years. Little change in this drought frequency would occur under the low emissions pathway, but under the high emissions pathway, we see these droughts uh, on average about every year. Uh, sea level rise is another uh, uh, way that climate change can impact Pennsylvania. Um, this is because um, uh, drinking water and industry in southeastern Pennsylvania rely on the Delaware River as a freshwater source. The most recent projections for the end of the century are for sea level to rise by 40 inches under the high emissions pathway. The rise is 28 inches under the low emissions pathway. Coupled with increasing drought frequency, which would give us more periods of low stream flow, sea level rise is very likely to increase the frequency and intensity of saltwater incursions up the Delaware River. This could cause health problems for Philadelphia residents with high blood pressure, those on dialysis, and those on restricted sodium diets. One of the most profound changes we show in this report is the loss of snow cover across Pennsylvania. Because of heat trapping emissions already in the atmosphere, the state's traditional white winters will all be, will be all but gone by, the, by mid century. Over the next several decades, as natural snow cover dramatically declines, snowmobiling is expected to become non existent regardless of the emissions pathway. Skiing and snowboarding currently take advantage of, of artificial snowmaking, but under the high emissions future, even this may be an option, may not be an option by mid century. Let me say a few things about forests and fisheries, and then I'll turn it over to my colleague Shelby Fleischer to discuss agricultural impacts. If emissions are not significantly curbed, we expect the state become, to become unsuitable for the economically valuable black cherry by late century. The same goes for maple, beech, and birch forests that produce Pennsylvania's brilliant fall foliage. As warming and decreased stream flow raise water temperatures, some streams and rivers may become inhospitable for two of the state's premier sport fish, trout and smallmouth bats. Uh, now Shelby and Fleischman will talk about some of the agricultural impacts. 